Cristo. My favorite part of user experience design is when we get to have a player sit down and play the game and experience it regardless of the barriers they might face. Seeing players just overjoyed at the experience is one of the things that brings absolute joy to my heart. I hope that everything that we do to make accessibility better within the game, that's something that we can bring to as many people as possible. I'm Mila Pavlin, and I'm the lead UX designer on God of War Ragnarok. My name is Sam Chappelle. I'm the associate UX accessibility designer. My name is Zhou Xiaoyi. I'm a rendering programmer. Hi, I'm Kate Marlin, senior producer of the gameplay team. My primary job is to make sure that as I'm looking across the game, as features are developed, that designers and programmers and artists up front are asking themselves, am I taking accessibility features into account while I'm designing this? Is there something I can add systemically that will help integrate this feature across the board? My job is to hook up everything and implement the accessibility features on the rendering side so that the designers are able to implement the features into the game. Great. I'll head across for a better look. User experience design allows us to look at accessibility from the user perspective. So we are the ones who are actually going into the game and looking at the different design problems that there are to solve within the game and figuring out ways that players can access that content regardless of anything that they might have a difficulty with because of accessibility concerns. Accessibility at its core is making sure that we allow folks who want to play a game to be able to access the game and all of its features that allows players to have experiences that they might not otherwise be able to. From swinging your axe as Kratos to traversing the realms and experiencing the story, these features make it possible to do these things. People are no longer limited by their physical capabilities and they will be able to enjoy the game just like anybody else. There is a saying in the accessibility community, never about us without us, and we really wanted to make sure that everything that we are doing is with the community and not just about them. So we have to reach out to fans and understand what their needs are when it comes to accessibility concerns. And we have to reach out through consultants and playtesters to understand uh, what things may be hindering someone from being able to complete the game. It's always the best to be able to communicate with the user and see what they're happy with and what they want improved. Some of the most inspiring things that I've seen that have made me want to think more about accessibility is seeing the stories that players have and how much it means to them when they're able to sit down with the game for the first time and play more than they ever thought they could. Boy, we must be better. You must never forget that. With the last God of War, we ended the game understanding that there were major problems with the way that we were designing for accessibility. Based on community feedback from the last title, we've incorporated several features into this title to make the experience more accessible. We talked to them about what they needed in order to play going forward, and we started to prioritize things very early in production. I think that was one of the biggest lessons we learned is that early production, um, making sure that we have everything in place at the beginning of the development cycle. If you're trying to bake a blueberry muffin, you don't wait until the end to put the blueberries in. You make sure that it's in the batter. And with accessibility, we needed to make sure that we put those blueberries into the batter at the beginning so that they could bake in and we would have accessibility at the end. By having controller remapping, by having assists for things that seem trivial, we allow people to get past those blockers and experience it in a way that it's intended. The features that I am most excited for players to try out are the combat assists. I think that these are just amazingly fun to use. In the last title, we had a feature called Recenter on Attack. Every time you'd hit an enemy, the camera would make sure that enemy was centered. When we're looking at God of War Ragnarok, we've expanded those combat options to allow for recenter on swing, which means that as you swing your axe um, in combat, you're gonna slowly orient towards a different enemy. This is one of my personal favorite features because every time you swing the axe or swing the blades, the camera recenters towards the enemy. 
This allows players to go into a space and if you have limited mobility or if you're unable to, to utilize the look controls, you can still target different enemies even though you're not hitting them. One of the most important areas of innovation that we have on God of War Ragnarok would be the increased controls access that we've allowed. So for example, players are now more able to remap the controller and choose from a wider range of presets. The feature that I'm most excited for players to try is the Collector's Mode. Collector's Mode highlights collectible objects in the game, such as ravens, so that they're much easier for players to find. I'm excited for players to try various features that we've created, from high contrast mode to traversal assist, auto pickup to navigation assist. Navigation assist was one that I particularly am proud of because we went from not being able to have someone navigate through the game at all to having someone be able to navigate using just a navigation assistance ping. So we looked at games like The Last of Us Part Two and how they were navigating players through their world with low vision play. And we took our own internal compass system and were able to actually allow players to rotate their camera towards the compass and navigate to their next objective. Other features to look out for would be subtitle customization. So for example, you can color the subtitle differently from the speaker and you can even have the speaker name show up or turn that off if you don't like to see that speaker name in front of there. You can set a background for the captions. So when you're seeing the text, if, it's, if you need more contrast behind the text, that's an option that's added in there. Another cool, exciting feature that we added was directional indicators to our captions and subtitles. So wherever a noise caption is coming from, the arrow will be pointing to it. So if there's a character speaking and you see the subtitles on the screen, there will be an arrow pointing out also where that character is relative to the player's camera. All these features will enable players to experience the game in different ways and adjust the challenge to their needs. Some of the things that I found useful are just settings around kind of reducing the amount of inputs I have to do when I don't feel like it's super necessary for me to control that aspect of the game. This one has helped me by having options like traversal assist, which just kind of makes the character vault over things and climb up things automatically, which reduces the strain on my body so I can just get ready to fight rather than just be spending time like traveling over things. I think a big misconception people have about accessibility features is that they're only applied to certain people. It's not about making a game easy. It's not about adding cheats. Accessibility controls are beneficial for everyone. It's beneficial for people with disabilities to be able to better engage with the game, but also open up those menus and see what they can do for you. People think accessibility means easy mode. And it is absolutely not about easy mode. If someone is unable to use their hand, for example, it doesn't mean that they want a lower difficulty, they just need it to be able to set the controls in a way that allows them to use the controls differently. I'm partially deaf, so I can only hear out of my right side. And the fact that they had audio panning made me really, really happy because I still can feel vibrations through my left. So I just channeled more of the audio through to my right side, which enabled me to hear everything just kind of better. Growing up playing games one-handed was very challenging. Early games didn't have all the accessibility features that games like God of War Ragnarok and The Last of Us Part II have. There's a stronger motivation there to be a better developer and a better designer when you know that you are making people's lives better by allowing them to play. The future of accessibility in video games is very exciting. As we continue to innovate and the conversation grows, the experience just gets better for everyone. My hope is that it will expand beyond our current audience to include everyone. The more every studio takes in information about what can make accessibility better, the more we can inspire each other and the better we can make all of our games more accessible. I really have a, a, a high vision of making games that are not just accessible in the way that you can just get through them, but that they're accessible in a way that they are enjoyable and create more choice for players. When we look at the way that the industry is turning, we're moving away from this idea of let's just get the player through the game and more into how can we make an accessible game the most enjoyable experience and how can we integrate these things into our games at a core level so that every player has access to those things. And as we expand that, I think that we're going to see an industry that is not only more accessible, but is more enjoyable overall.